Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Edward Christian Church. It's time to get started. Uh, let's all stand and let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Pastor David is out of town uh, for this weekend. Um, so let's be remembering him and Sister Linda and their travels. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started. Let's start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the time and opportunity it is to be in your house this morning, to come together in one mind and one accord. And Father, we just ask that you administer mightily in this place as we seek your face and draw nigh unto you, draw nigh unto us. Supply the needs that we stand in need of this morning according to your riches and glory that testimony would be given, Father, when we depart from this place, Lord Father. We'll thank you for everything that's said and done. In Christ Jesus' name, the church said, Amen. Let's uh, remain standing as we go to the Lord in worship. church. How's everybody doing this morning? i 
sure to uh, put it in before you leave today. Um, Brother Doug, would you like to pray over the offering this sure. morning? Our Father in we thank you for this opportunity once again to give back to you what you've already given to us. Lord, I pray that you would take it, that you would bless it and multiply it for your glory and your, for your kingdom. Bless those that have to give, Lord, and those that have not. Provide for all. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Is there any outspoken requests this morning? Yeah. Uplift his hands, special needs, lost loved ones. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for the time and opportunity to gather again once again this morning. We just ask that you would minister to each and every hand and each and every request, Lord God. We ask that you would move in a powerful way, Lord God. The testimony would be given of your goodness and grace and we'll be sure, Father, to give you all the honor and the praise and the glory.
Well, we've been talking lately about spiritual warfare. David told me that, and I went home. I said, I know what I'm going to talk about. I already got the outline written. It's laying right there on the desk. No problem. Well, I got home, and guess what I found on that desk? Nothing. <laughs> I thought it was in the computer, but it wasn't laying on the desk where I could grab it and go with it. So I started digging through everything there, looking for maybe the backup that I was going to use. Couldn't find either one. Only thing I found was a piece of handwritten paper, kind of all messed up, everything else, about somebody who didn't have a clue who he was. But I reckon that's what the Holy Ghost wanted me to talk about today. Because he tied in with spiritual warfare pretty good. Now, we think we, this country has got a lot of problems right now, but we do. The main problem we have is we've turned our back on God. We've taken him out of our society, out of being in charge of this country. The boys that wrote the Constitution were smart and decoration were kind of smart for their time. They were not, in my opinion, smart enough to write what they did. They were smart enough to ask for help, and they got it. God had a big hand in the creation of this country. And now we try to kick him out. I'm going to get into more of that in a minute. <laughs> that paper that I find all messed up, handwritten in pencil, I'm a carpenter, so I'm going to use pencil. But it was by a boy named Amos. Well, who in the heck is Amos? Well, I don't know. I had to look it up. Come to find out, Amos wrote a book in the Bible. <laughs> Shows you how much I know, don't it? Okay, never mind. <clears throat> but just who the heck was this boy? Well, Amos was a shepherd. And at that time, being a shepherd was about the lowest you could go in Israeli society. That was, that was the bottom of the barrel. It was about the same thing as we classify commercial fishermen with today. And yeah, I'm a commercial fisherman too, so there you go. But they looked down on Amos. Amos had no ministry training whatsoever. I mean, he was a shepherd. The only thing he knew about was sheep. Of course, he smelled like a sheep. He's like commercial fishermen smell like dead fish. He smelled that way. <clears throat> but Amos, although he had no training in ministry whatsoever, there was one thing he did have. And that was a vision from God. God told him to go out and share with Israel what he had been told. So he did. He shared with Israel. And we're going to get into some of that in a minute. And why was he, why would God send him out <clears throat> to share with the people? Because Israel was in trouble. Sound familiar? They were suffering from moral decay all over their country. So God sent Amos to tell them what they needed to do. Now just how many times did Israel turn their back on God? And what happened every time they did? Bad things, and bad things. Now they turned their back on God in spite of the covenant that God had with Abraham. The fact that God brought them out of slavery out of Egypt and to the promised land. They still turned their backs on God. And when they got to Mount Sinai on the way to the promised land, Moses went up to get the Ten Commandments. He was gone for a while, so the people, the Israelites, decided that they wanted some another worship item. So they made a golden calf and they worshiped that. But when Moses came down, y'all know the story about the broken commandments, etc. God wasn't real pleased with what they had done. And some of them kind of suffered for it. They had a, they had a bad weekend, we'll put it that way. You know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> then they got to the promised land. And all they had to do was go in and take it over. So they sent 12 spies in to check it out. 
to see what was going on there. Well, turns out, ten of them come back and says, no, we ain't hang over there. They, they're too strong, they're too big, they're about eight foot tall. I think they had six fingers and toes, something like that, on each hand and foot. They were big boys, about four grown. <coughs> he said, no, we can't take them. <coughs> the cities are too fortified. They're strongholds. There's no way we can get in there. Remember the stronghold and, and fortified. We're going to hear that again in a minute. There's just no way we can do it. And two of them come back and said, man, this land is filled with milk and honey. It's perfect for us. Yeah, they're big. <coughs> yeah, they're strong. The city's fortified. Yeah, they're not stronghold, but we can take them with God's help. The answer is with God's help. Just like this country, we can take it back with God's help. But we've got to have him in charge. If he ain't in charge, we're wasting our time. Because it ain't going to be done. <coughs> but they refused to go in because in the, in the sight of the Amicites, they felt like grasshoppers. So they refused to go in and fight. So they had to wander around in the desert for 40 years. Still, again, they turned against God. Now what we're going to read now, I hope, is Amos, that's about two-thirds of the way back in the Old Testament. Amos chapter 5. We're going to start at verse 7. It's, it's toward the back of the Old Testament, about two-thirds of the way down. Ye who turn judgment <coughs> to wormwood and leave out all righteousness to the earth. Seek him that maketh the seven stars and Orion and turneth the shadow of death into morning and makes the day dark with night and calls the waters of the sea and pours them out upon the surface of the earth. The Lord is his name. That strengtheneth the spoil against the strong so that the spoils shall come against the fortress. They hate him who that rebuke in the game. In the game. <clears throat> and they are him that seek the up, uprising. Furthermore, therefore, as you're treading upon the poor, and ye take from him burdens of wheat, bundles of wheat, we have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall never dwell in them. You shall have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink wine of them. For I know your many manifold transgressions and your mightly sins. They affected the just. They make a bride. They take a bride. They run. <clears throat> they turn aside the poor in the gate of their from their right. Therefore, the problem shall keep silence in this time, for this is the evil time. Seek God and not evil, that you may live, so that the Lord, the God of hosts, shall be with you as ye have spoken. Hate the evil and love the good and establish judgment and the gate that it may be that the Lord God that host will be gracious upon the remnants of Joseph. Therefore, the Lord, the God of hosts, the Lord said, Wailing shall come, beach, wailing shall be in all the streets, and thou shalt say in all the highways, Alas, alas, thou shalt call the husband man to mourning, and such are the skillful of laminates and wailing. <clears throat> and there in all the vineyards shall be waiting, waiting, for I shall pass through thee, saith the Lord. Now what that talks about the gate is talking about the court system. The court system back in Amos' day was in bad shape. They, the rich pretty much controlled it, and they did about what they wanted to. That's what Amos was trying to get through to them. But still, they turned against God. 
Now just how stupid can you be when you see all the mighty works that God has done for you to turn against him? I mean, he parted the Red Sea when they left Egypt so they could walk across on dry ground. That ain't an easy thing for any of us to even comprehend that it's going to be done. When they were in the desert after they had refused him, they complained that they were thirsty. So God made water come from a stone. We ain't never seen that happen. They were hungry. They complained about being hungry. So God sent manna from heaven so that they could have something to eat. Then they complained <coughs> that the fact that all they had was bread, they needed meat. So God sent quail for them to eat. And still, they turned against me. Just how done can you be? Well, let's find out <coughs> just how done we can be. Because right now, let's leave Amos in the past in 7, 750 B.C., I think it was, he read this stuff. And let's look at us today in the 21st century. <coughs> if we turn against God, well, let's look at the facts. One woman took prayer out of school. One woman took prayer out of school while we did nothing. Utility scenes are not allowed on public places anymore, public squares, public property, because it's offensive to some. And we as Christians set on our blessed assurance and allowed it to happen. Prayer civic organizations. It's not allowed because ACLU sued because some people got offended. And again, we as Christians, we did that. The Ten Commandments are not allowed in the courtroom. They had to take them down off the wall because it offended some people. Then they're not allowed in classrooms either because why should we teach our children such bad things is love thy neighbor? The gay marriages were sanctified. Not only the reunions, but the sanctification of marriage. I don't think God really appreciated that either. These are just a few examples. I mean, y'all can name a whole lot more of them if you stop and halfway think about it as to what the heck is going on in this country. Even our government is going against the First Amendment. The FBI went after the Catholic Church and tried to literally shut them down because of the doctrine that they were preaching. That so far they've been unsuccessful. If they get successful in shutting down the Catholic Church, guess who's next? You want to know who's next? Go in either side of those doors right there. And right above the sink, you'll see a picture of the person that's going to be next. Because <laughs> they're coming after us. Parents were speaking out in public school board meetings about what their children were being taught and how their children were being taught. I forget, were they arrested or just harassed? But you can believe one or the other happened because they come after them for having the audacity to dare to speak up against what their children were being taught. <clears throat> I heard they were going to hire 60, I think it was 60,000, might have been 80, new IRS agents to go after the rich so they could bring the rich and make them pay their fair share. I know y'all have heard it before a number of times. And every time they were going to tax the rich, my taxes went up, same as yours did. I'm a long way from being rich. And you're going to find out, I bet you didn't know that you was rich either, did you? You wait until next tax season, you'll find out just how rich you really, they think you really are. <coughs> what can we, y'all heard the expression, I forget where it's, where, you, where it's written at, but right is wrong and wrong is right. Yeah, that, that, <clears throat> that's going to happen. Well, it seems to me like we ain't got to wait for it no more. 
I forget where I read that. Uh, could have been in Revelations, maybe. I don't know. Look it up and see just where that came from. Now, what can we do as individuals to make a difference to turn this country around? The first thing you got to do is put on the armor of God. You got to put on that helmet and put on even the shoes and the ankle braces, leg braces, and carry that shield of faith and the, and the uh, chest so that we can take care of anything that comes against us. And believe me, they're going to be a coming because you're interfering with their power. You're interfering with their money. And these people are used to having it their way. And these are the ones running the country. Ain't nobody we re-elect or elect. It's just these are the ones in charge because they're giving their orders. But we need to go after them and we need to stop them and we need to let them know they are not in charge. We need to prove to them that God is in charge of our country, that God is the salvation that we're looking for, and God is the only thing that stands between us and total destruction. Without him, we ain't going to be a country anymore. With him, we're going to flourish and be the country that he created a while back. God founded this country. He created, founded it the way he wanted it. Let's go back to what God wanted and make it our country again. Well, what you going to do? You got on the armor? Go out there and talk to somebody. Talk to everybody you see. Witness to them. Tell them how we got to get God back in charge of this country and how Jesus died for their salvation. But talk to them. Let them know. Witness to everybody that you see. And one thing you got to do, now this ain't going to be easy. It ain't going to be fun. And it's going to hurt, I promise you. You got to expand your comfort zone. That zone in which you are comfortable in everything you do, that you don't, as long as you don't step out of that zone, everything's fine, hunky dory, and you're getting along real good. Let me ask you a question. How many of you in here would be comfortable wading waist deep in a slimy green swamp looking somebody you don't know, never met, and never see again? Not many of you. I won't either. The first few times I did it. But right now you're looking at the swamp rat up here. I got that nickname from the mountain boys. We had an exercise we were doing up there. Poured rain the whole time we were there. The only thing dry about me was my socks. Because like a dummy, I had bought, spent $50 on a pair of Gore-Tex socks. Two bread bags were done exactly the same thing. But then what do I know back then? So I bought the socks. My feet were dry. I was sitting at a table drinking coffee tra and eating, drinking soup, trying to warm up just a little bit, temperature around 30 degrees. And a couple of mountain boys walked by and said, look at old Davis over there. So he looks like a drowned rat. I said, yeah, that's one of them swamp rats. That's what they think of us down here. So name stuck, and I like it. It's pretty accurate. And as far as search world and... and Pitt Community, the Pitt Detention Center, I'm the swamp rat. And I earned that, okay? But get that comfort zone bigger. You ain't comfortable talking to people? Forget that, go out there and do it anyway. I tell you how I do it. Holy Ghost, I can't handle this. You're going to have to take over. You tell me what to do, I'll do it, but you had to be in charge in order for us to get the job done. You send him that, and he, guess what he's going to tell you? All right, get your hind parts in gear and go. I didn't want to go to the pit detention center either until the Holy Ghost told me the third time that I would go. And I told him, yes, sir, and David and I went. I'll tell you about that story some other time. <clears throat> but we got to get involved. 
Do y'all remember a few years ago they came after Chick-fil-A because Chick-fil-A was open on Sunday and they openly believed in God. And they came to shut them down. They formed picket lines around their, their uh, stores to keep people from going in. Well, with a bunch of us folks, mostly Christians, they didn't sit too well. So a bunch of them got together and they went in. They went through the picket lines despite being harassed and cursed and everything else. They forced their way through, went in, sat down and had a meal. But the efforts to shut down Chick-fil-A didn't work so good. They're still in business. As long as we get God behind us, everything goes against us and will fail. But we got to put Him first in order to work. Now keep up with the actions, the government actions, especially in the courtrooms. Remember that Amos talked about the gate. That's, uh, it also means the court and how the court system is rigged and is going after the poor. They don't stand much of a chance when they get to court. That's what he was talking about. you got representatives in Congress. You can call them. You can write them. You can email them. You can visit them. Tell them what the heck is going on and whether or not you're going to put up with it. If you don't like what they're doing, tell them you don't like what they're doing. And if they don't get to act together, their hind parts are going to be looking a job because we're going to fire them. If they are doing the right thing, if they are doing what's best for this country, tell them. Tell them, look, as long as you keep doing this, we're behind you 100%. Come next election, you've got our vote. But at the same time, let them know that we are for them, that they're doing good. And that's the measurement you want. Does it help the country or not? Does it support God or not? Those are the criteria that you're looking for. Now, what can one person do? you got at your disposal the mightiest assault weapon this country has ever known. For uh, some people, it's a weapon of mass destruction. Use it. Well, what is that weapon that you keep talking about, that's the mightiest assault weapon? It's the vote. You not only have the right to vote, you have the responsibility to vote. Well, how am I going to... Need know how, Brandon, you might want to come up and play a little bit because I ain't too far from shutting up. <laughs> know the candidates that are running. Do they share your views? Are their views what's best for the country? Do their views go for God or against God? Know their views. If their views line up with what you think they should and they're good for this country, then not only vote for them, campaign for them. Talk to people, tell them, John Brown is the one we need up there because he does this, this, and this. And if necessary, if you think it's, you should, go work in their campaign headquarters or offices or whatever. Support the ones that are trying to do good for this country. There's a few out there. Granted, it's not a lot. I'll get into that in a minute. There is a few. Above all, hold them all accountable for their actions, good and bad. Hold them accountable. If they do good, tell them, hey, you done good. You got my vote. I'm going to support you. If they do bad, look, you keep this up and your hind parts is out of there. We're going to fire your butt because you ain't doing what's best for this country. You ain't put, putting God first. You put trying to kick him out the door. And we ain't having that. But remember, use that assault weapon. Go out there and vote. When I was growing up, there was a program on television called the Carolina Sports. Some of y'all might remember that. I used to really enjoy that program and would watch it every week because it was about hunting and fishing in North Carolina. But one thing 
the boy always closed his show with the same three words. And I used to think, man, you have lost your ever-loving mind. What in the world are you talking about? That just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. But the older I got, the more sense it started making. And what were those three words he closed his program with? Don't reelect anybody. I think he had it figured out a long time before I ever thought about it. But what we got is 537 people that are elected in Foggy Bottom. My personal opinion is we need 537 brand new faces up there because the ones up there ain't doing a very good job. Now, there's a few up there, but it's so hard to find and figure out which ones it is that best is just wipe the slate clean and start over again so that we get the people up there. And personally, I think it's probably going to take about six elections, but five elections before number six, believe we'll fire him too. But eventually, they will get the message. And eventually, we can turn this country around if and only if we put God back in charge. He's the only hope we have as a nation. And just remember, there's two people that died for you in this world. One's the American soldier, the other the, who died for your freedom. The other's Jesus Christ who died for your salvation. Just remember that. And when you walk down here, it means you're getting ready to shut up. So, in a minute, we're going to say the Lord's Prayer, and I want Doug to close this out. He's one of the first ones of that group that put on that green uniform, and if necessary, was ready to die for your freedom. Just remember those. And a bunch of them did. There was four from Washington that died in Vietnam War. Two of them are real close friends of mine. So just... Remember the veterans and remember the soldiers that we have today, all the branches, especially the Marines. They're the baddest of the bad. But <clears throat> when you were born, you cried and the world rejoiced. Live your life so that when you die, the world cries and you rejoice. And who brought us here? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thy the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Father Hamill, well, thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you, Brother Benny, for stepping up and bringing forth this message. Lord, we thank you for the reminder that we cannot do anything of ourselves, but that we can do all things through you who strengthens us. Lord, give us an ear to hear what you have to say, to do your will and to lift up others, to strengthen this country and serve you. Lord, I pray that you would be with us now as we depart these words would just not fall on us and drift away. They would sink into our hearts that you made us in your image, that you put us here for a purpose, and that we would fulfill the purpose which you have planned for us. Keep us safe until we come back at the next appointed time. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.